divided by the number of things in there, you just get an average of all the numbers. So they're really, because if, if, if like add them together, then squares are really tough. We've been studying Othello for a good month now, and we just wrapped up Act 3 of Othello. And it became apparent to me when I was listening to a set of oral exams from my students that they were just viewing Iago in a very, very general way. We basically did an oral and we all described Iago in the same way. Uh, it's evil and we didn't get it very, like, we didn't get very, not, not, not technical, we didn't get very varied with our descriptions of him as a character. And so he was like, no, no, I want you guys to really kind of like understand and look at him as a character. So he made us do this exercise to make us come up with all these adjectives which we would use to describe him, which are all very different, but yet all play into Iago as a person. Yes, <laughs> any others? The precocious? That's up there. That's up there. Oh. Sinister. That's up there. Is it unloving there? That's up there. Yeah. It's up there. Okay. I think it's important to note that this lesson isn't one that, you know, I ever used before, and I certainly hadn't planned this as part of a unit when I was going into Othello. But because of these orals, I decided it was time that my students really needed to explore just who Iago was. And I figured by taking this approach where they focus on Iago's character traits and manipulating them mathematically, um, that that's exactly what they would do. But here's how we did it. I had them in class start jotting down five or six traits that they immediately associated with Iago. <laughs> Consistent. Vengeful. Some of them would label things as power units. Um, they changed terms wherever they, they felt they, they needed to. They interpreted um, their numbers in, in different ways. Sometimes a negative number was a positive result. They did a lot of analysis of both the process of their equation and then some very thoughtful analysis of the result. Uh, but what's also interesting throughout all of that is that no one ever got hung up on the mathematics of it. It was still, for every student, it was focused through the, through the lens of understanding Iago. It never turned into, this is just a math exercise and we're doing it in English class. It never, it never went there. One of the things that I was surprised by was, well, two things I was surprised by. How quickly they started attributing traits to Iago. That told me that in their orals, they either had decided not to think or they were just, again, using a term generically and not thinking about it even as they were using it. But I was also surprised by how many different traits we could get up on, on the board. The board was absolutely full of traits and, you know, it's your standard, you know, whiteboard. I grouped, uh, looking back at the, the words that I chose as the most important, I decided that manipulative and deceitful are the two that most signify or are most important to Yahoo's character, so I grouped them together, and I squared them, but I can't write that, um, and I squared them, yeah. and then I added them to all of the other more negative words that I chose, which were two-faced, plotting, perceptive, and opportunistic. One of the traits that, that caused a lot of discussion in my class, uh, applying it to Iago, was that he was an opportunistic character. And as some of my students were putting their equations on the board, I noticed some of them were using it as a negative trait. Some are using it as a positive trait. And uh, so the question arose in class, is how can being opportunistic be negative? Thank you. What do you guys think? Don't you think being perceptive and, and opportunistic are connected? Do you make your own opportunities? Not the same. Oh, I think they're connected, but they're definitely not the same yeah. thing. Because if you're perceptive, you see opportunities, but opportunistic is about taking them. But perceptive is not well, taking opportunity. an opportunity a bad thing? I still don't care. I have a lot of evidence that the students took ownership of, of that task. One, how quickly they went into it. Two, the immediate amount of fun that a lot of them were having with it. Um, his, what, or sort of what face he is and what his plan is, and now he's going how to use that to utterly like rocket upwards at a rate of 453 yagas per line <laughs> up to <laughs> his, his. When I 
started this exercise, I figured my students would do the approach that, that I did, was to form a simple mathematic equation using the order of operations, combining traits that were like, and either adding or subtracting them from other traits, and then maybe multiplying or dividing. Most of the students um, went beyond that. Um, I felt that I kind of just took it too far, uh, and I kind of liked that because I mean, as, as fun as this assignment was, I just, I basically just said, okay, how can I use, like, something from another subject, like, that I really like? Not to say that I don't like English. It's not really what my main focus or my main interest, but, so I basically got to do something in English, a class that I'm not as good at, and a class that I don't enjoy as much, even though I think Ms. Ryan was a great teacher, um, to use something from a class that I really enjoy and that I really understand and that I'm doing well in. And I thought that it was kind of cool to see how those could combine, especially since you don't usually say, okay, I mean, math and English are usually considered opposite ends of a spectrum of, like, it's schools where you have these very kind of, like, writing, kind of um, more creative, not, in a sense, and then math where there's only, like, one answer, usually. So it's, I thought it was kind of cool to combine those two. Uh, some of them went moderately beyond that by, you know, squaring traits. Um, other students, um, uh, went way beyond it. I had a few students who went into um, uh, calculus regression analysis on that. Huge things on their own and, and again it was only focused on their understanding of Iago really now in Act 3 but some of them went back with the calculus regression analysis all the way back to Act 1 on their own for a piece of work that they knew was not going to be graded. It goes like a cube, I mean, you all know a cubic function, I'm like x to the third Basically, um, you can draw it on there. If you want. Oh yeah, I'll, not on this. I'll just draw it on the board. So, I had one student, Raphael, who became really involved in this. And given how busy they are as seniors here in the IB program, I, you know, I was absolutely stunned that that he was willing to go to the lengths he did. And so, it kind of goes like that. <laughs> not the newest class. And so, yeah. He plotted a graph in which he found a point of intersection somewhere in Act 3 in which Othello, on a, on a given event, and I forget which event it was now, there was a little piece of dialogue in there he was able to pinpoint mathematically in which Othello and Iago start to go in very different directions. Yeah, point of inflection where basically he changes from being like going his power steadily reducing, um, reducing in rate of change to increasing in rate of change. So at this point is when he really starts to take off and increase exponentially. To, and that's up in Act 3? Uh, that's actually in Act 2, Scene 1. Okay. Um, and that's, it actually makes more sense when you see it with Othello's thing, but it's the moment when Othello says to Desdemona, um, uh, I can never get better than this. Life will never be better than this point on, and from this point, I will decrease. Um, I mean, most of it was pretty basic stuff, like addition and squaring and then subtraction and uh, dividing. So it wasn't, the math itself wasn't complicated, but what I, I went on further for the, the, um, for the, the assignment, I actually used some stuff that I learned in my math higher class uh, in terms of regressions. And it was also like skills that I used for lab reports and IAs in my sciences, where you have a data set and then you use something to model that data set and then you can use that to predict things. And so it was, it was a combination of math and, and my math higher skills and then also eyes and stuff for the equation itself. If I were to do this again, um, I, I will. I, I know I'll be doing this again. Uh, initially, I just did it because I sensed a concern that my students were generalizing over a very, very, very complex character. I wanted them to understand that Iago is composed of a lot of admirable traits. He, he is, he's very perceptive. He he's, um, thinks on his, his feet. He's an excellent listener, you know, all these wonderful traits. And that it's not necessarily the traits that makes a character or a person evil, it's what you do with all of that. And I think when I do it again, I will do it this time before they do any of their orals. So they go into their first practice orals with all these lovely adjectives, descriptors of Yago in mind.